Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry 2. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on chemical kinetics. We're going to talk about some of the fundamental goals of chemical kinetics, or the measurement of chemical reaction rates, and we'll talk about rate laws for those reactions that tell us something about concentration dependence, both differential rate laws and integrated rate laws. We'll talk about the temperature dependence of reactions and something called the Arrhenius law, and we'll talk about two simple theories of reaction rates that allow us to predict the rates of reaction from molecular properties. Now the overall goal of chemical kinetics is to parameterize reaction rates so that we can understand the concentration dependence of the rates and the temperature dependence of the rates in order to be able to predict the rate of any chemical reaction under a wide variety of conditions. Sometimes we can get at the energy dependence and angular dependence of chemical reaction rates using fancy molecular beam uh, experiments. And the overall goal is to understand the underlying reaction mechanism, the, the details of the bond breaking and bond making processes that govern the overall rate of any chemical reaction. We, and ultimately, we want to be able to predict reaction rates from molecular fundamentals, things like masses and uh, energies of reactants. So to measure the speed of a car, what we do is we divide, divide the distance traveled in miles or kilometers by the time difference between the two measurements. And uh, if the time difference of those measurements gets very small, then we get a, a measurement that's very close to the instantaneous speed. So instead of saying I went uh, 400 miles in three days, which would be sort of an overall uh, global average of speed, I can say I'm going 45 miles per hour. Now the progress of a chemical reaction is not measured in miles or kilometers, but in concentration, in moles per liter. So the reaction rates have units of moles per liter per second. That's how we measure the progress or the rate of a chemical reaction. So a first order law, rate law is um, where a, the rate of a chemical reaction is linearly proportional to the concentration of reactant. And we can write this in differential form. It's sometimes more convenient to convert this to an integrated form by taking the differential form of reaction, put everything involving concentration on the left-hand side and everything involving time on the right-hand side, integrate both sides uh, from an initial condition to some uh, temperature some time t and then we find uh, that we can predict that for a first order reaction the concentration of reactant decreases exponentially in time so this is actually a convenient way of measuring a rate constant without having to measure uh, a an instantaneous rate of reaction which might involve uh, lots of error for a second order reaction, the rate of reaction is proportional to the square of the reactant concentration. And again, we can take a similar approach to uh, forming an integrated rate law, which uh, predicts that the reciprocal of um, concentration of uh, reactant A should be linearly proportional uh, to time. And so what that predicts is that the, the decrease in reactant concentration sort of levels off uh, more in a more dramatic way than does the first order rate law. Now, for elementary reactions, one-step reactions, or reactions that are um, uh, rate-limited by uh, one-step reactions involving just a single reactant, the reaction order can be predicted from the molecularity. So in the in the case of a first order reaction, the rate could be uh, predicted uh, to be uh, linearly proportional to uh, reactant, uh, for example, N2O5. For multi-step reactions, the rate law must be determined experimentally in most cases, and the concentration dependence can be quite complicated. So the apparently simple reaction of H2 with Br2 to make HBr actually goes by a multi-step chain reaction mechanism and has a rather complicated rate law that's neither first order nor second order, but something a lot more complicated. The temperature dependence of uh, rate uh, of chemical reactions is usually expressed in the temperature dependence of the rate constant. And that's given for many reactions approximately by uh, this form, which is called the Arrhenius law, where the activation energy, E sub A, uh, is related to uh, a reaction energy barrier associated with bond breaking in the initiation of the reaction step.
To determine the rate constant experimentally, we can plot uh, the logarithm of the rate constant k versus reciprocal temperature in kelvins, and the slope of such a plot will be equal to minus e sub a divided by r, the um, universal gas constant. So this is a pretty general way of calculating the de temperature dependence of reactions. Now, the, a simple collision theory of reactions um, would say that the overall reaction rate can be viewed as the product of a collision rate or encounter rate between reactants A and B, and uh, the probability that A and B have enough energy in that collision to surmount the reaction energy barrier, uh, which is closely associated with the activation energy E sub A. And so we can write the collision rate as uh, a factor z, which involves the masses and, and speeds of the atoms and the cross-sectional areas of the atoms, um, times uh, a times b, and the probability of uh, being having, a, having enough energy to react as a Boltzmann factor e to the minus e sub a over rt. We can rearrange this into the more usual form for a um, bimolecular reaction, which would be first order in A, first order in B, and second order overall, um, by saying that the rate constant K is actually equal to this factor Z that involves just uh, properties of the molecules, uh, times E to the minus activation energy over RT, which is associated with the reaction barrier. Now, transition state theory is a little bit more complex theory, um, and what it imagines is that there is this activated complex, which is a local configuration of atoms of the reactants that's near the top of the potential energy barrier that separates the reactants from the products. And we can write a, a quasi-equilibrium concentration of this activated complex near the transition state as um, the concentration of AB double dagger is equal to some um, quasi-equilibrium constant, K double dagger, times the concentration of A and the concentration of B. Now, the theory of transition state theory tells us that the velocity of going over the barrier at the transition state is KT over H, where th this K is actually the Boltzmann constant, R divided by Avogadro's number and that the overall reaction rate is just the product of these two things. And uh, so then, again, we can put this into the general form for a bimolecular reaction, which is first order in A and first order in B. But now the rate constant has uh, the interpretation that it's kT over H, this velocity, times the quasi-equilibrium constant, big K double dagger. And all of the real work in transition state theory then turns out to be in calculating K double dagger. We can do this by taking advantage of our theoretical framework from thermodynamics by saying that K double dagger is related to the enthalpy and entropy difference between the reactants, A plus B, and this activated complex, uh, AB double dagger, this uh, configuration. And if we use theoretical chemistry to calculate the energy and enthalpy and entropy of this activated complex, then we can actually put uh, all of this into a form where we can predict the rate of reaction based on thermodynamic considerations and this velocity kT over H. This is actually a, tra a transition state theory gives us an upper limit to reaction rates, and it's usually good to within something like a factor of 10 of the real reaction rate if we do a good job in calculating the properties of the activated complex. Next time we'll talk more about chemical kinetics and we'll talk specifically about complex reaction me mechanisms and how to calculate rate laws from them and we'll talk a little bit about catalysis as well. See you then.